Greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Yeah. Let's bless the Lord day and night. The song I opened with, it stopped me from rattling. I had to remember where I was and that this is not a, a um, television broadcast. It's not entertainment, it's worship. Yeah, um, so I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Greetings to Deacon Wallace. Greetings to Mother Edwards, to Sister Dolores, Mother Dolly, Brother Earl, Brother Patrick, Pastor Shirley, and Sister Cynthia. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, and before I ask Overseer to open in prayer, sending apologies from Brother Leroy. He's had to take Elizabeth to the hospital. Um, and there are other details, it's nothing serious, but we will keep Brother Leroy and his family in prayer. I will be asking Brother Patrick to do um, a summary on what we've been taught um, over the last few weeks, uh, the 12 apostles, including Paul and the ministry of the apostles. Um, first Corinthians, is it first Corinthians, Brother Pat? Or second, I wasn't sure. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter 11, just for those of you who want to get your Bibles ready. And also, and I know this is putting you on the spot, Brother Earl, but I'll be asking you for a few words as well. And brethren, I won't be stretching it out, but you know, um, then I'll be asking Brother Wallace if he can close in prayer. And we may have a couple of prayers in between, but it's just to let you know it's that you're settled. I'm not teaching today, <laughs> Brother Patrick. And Brother Earl, our ministers will be. And um, it is a privilege to be here. I've come prepared, brethren. I've come prepared to worship. And if you can take of your mic before overseer starts to pray and just praise God and thank him for being here. Let's start invoking the presence. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. the Lord, brethren. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord, Praise brethren. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful. Praise God to be here. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask Overseer to open our Bible study in prayer. God bless you. How we pray. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Greetings to everyone, the Lord bless you. Strengthen and keep us as we have our minds stayed on him. Kind, precious, loving, holy Father and a redeeming God. We come again another time before your divine presence. As we have gathered together, assembling ourselves another Thursday night to worship you in a devout study of your divine word. We thank you that you have commissioned the church through your son, Jesus Christ, and through the apostles that we should study to show our self approve unto you. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing your divine word. So as we come tonight, Lord, and we gather together, we separate ourselves from the various things that would attract us and focus on your divine promises. And more than all, ask for the divine leading of your spirit. We thank you that we have been advice or we have been instructed to understand that the, to fear you is the beginning of wisdom. And when we begin to have wisdom, we will depart from evil. 
also fearing you, Lord, you give us understanding. And by your knowledge, you reveal yourself. And by your spirit, you lead us. And so tonight we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who come from your bowels, that you would bless us as you sanctify us by his blood and help us loving father that these few moments that we spend will be unto edification of our soul and more than all unto glorifying you because your name is worthy to be praised from the uprising of the sun, even to the going down. Again, Lord, we come and we bring before you tonight your man's servant who has been placed in the responsibility of teaching the word to your people. And Lord, you understand the obstacle of the sneer that had fallen upon him. Even at this time, that he is not being able to finish or complete the course that you set him on. But Lord, you're, he's gone into another avenue where it, we often sing that there are unknown waves before us roll. There are hiding rocks and there are treacherous shore. But we thank you that in every way we do, chart and compass come from you. We can always ask that you will find us, us. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, even at this time, whatsoever the condition upon this, his daughter in person of Elizabeth, that you stretch forth your mighty hands, you who make the body that is the house of the soul and all the internal organs that dwell inside the body that keep the blood flowing and break, cutting down the different type of substance we're taking to give us energy to live for the time you lend us. You can actually rectify any condition that goes out of control in our body because our body is supposed to be your temple, Lord. You said, our body is a temple of the living God. And we thank you that the representative of the temple of God is the eternal soul that comes out of you that is in the body. But the body is a house for the soul. And Lord, we know that the reason why things happen to the body is because you do not suffer the body to continue and you give it a limited time. And you said that outer man perish, but the inner man would be renewed day by day. And so even at this time, the perishing elements that had been made manifested as a reminder that the body would perish, even in the body of this uh, daughter of your son, we pray that you will resuscitate it by the power of the life-giving blood of your son, which is eternal, that sanctify all things. For we thank you that your words would always give us that confidence to know that he was wounded for transgression, bruised for iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And we thank you that by his stripes we are healed. We thank you for the blood that purchased us. And we thank you the water that come from his side is for the healing of the nation. Therefore, we pray you'll minister the substance of healing in the body of this, your son, daughter tonight, that we would continue to give you glory. For you say, these signs shall follow them that believe. You said we will cast out devils. We would lay on the sick. And they would recover. We thank you not that it's not our hands that we lay, but by faith we lay in the representation of the hands of your son, Jesus Christ, who is wounded for transgression, bruised for iniquity, chastisement of our pieces upon him. And we thank you that by stripes you are ill, restoring soul and healing body. 
Bless this service now as we enter into the continuation of the teaching of your word. Glory to God of that which you have ordained, the calling of the foundation of the church, the apostles and prophets, but the apostles, which is a foundation of the church, which also the 12 tribe of Israel, the foundation of your people, and you, the living God, who actually choose Israel to be your elect, and your son, who has been brought forth by your appointed word, taking on the fullness of the word manifest in the flesh. Choose the church is the heir of the church, the son of the living God, who give it all truth and guide in all truth. Bless and sanctify us now as we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, Abbasia. God bless you. Thank you for opening. Thank you for covering. God bless you. At this time, brethren, Brother Patrick, Brother Patrick, the brethren, God bless you. God bless you, Sister Sandra. And thank you for leading our Bible study thus far. Bless his name, I didn't expect to be saying anything this evening, but the Bible says that we should be ready in season and out of season to give an answer of the hope that we have within us. Bless his name, and I give God thanks that that hope is within me. Bless his name. And what is that hope? The hope of eternal life and the hope also that God will keep us unto the coming of his son, that we can obtain that eternal inheritance that was promised to the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, bless his name. So I want to start by showing honor to the ministry, which is given for the perfecting of the saints, giving God thanks for the senior ministers, giving God thanks for the elders, the pastors, the teachers, the deacons, thanking God for them, those whom God has chosen and given gifts to minister to the edification of the saints until we all grow to be perfect men in Christ so that when we are presented to God, we will be acceptable being sanctified by the word of God and also sanctified by the Holy Ghost. So I give God thanks for Elder Thompson, thanking God for the able way in which the spirit of God has led him to speak to us about the 12 disciples that were chosen by Jesus. When Jesus prayed all night, yes, the scripture does say that. Brother Leroy read it to us. Jesus prayed all night. And after he had prayed all night, he went down and he chose his 12 disciples. Blessed be his name. We give God thanks to show that Jesus had set the example that when we want direction from God, we have to first pray for his leading and for his guidance. Bless God. Jesus, although he had the spirit of God without measure, he still went to his father for guidance that he would follow the leading of his father by fulfilling the will of God. So he chose 12 disciples as Brother Leroy had taught us. And those disciples that he chose, he called them apostles. So the disciples were students, if you like. Bless his name. They were students under Christ for three and a half years. Jesus teaching them to exercise faith. Jesus teaching them also to follow the prophecies of the scriptures that some of the scriptures that were in the Old Testament, those 12 disciples that were brought up 
under Jewish tuition from the synagogues as children. Bible says, train up the child in the way that they should go. And Paul speak about Timothy's birth and his, his childhood, that from a child, he had known the scriptures, bless his name, that were able to make him wise unto salvation. So those disciples were brought up in scripture, bless his name. That is what it means to be a proper child. You're given the right governing teachings from the scriptures to teach you how you should fear God, to teach you how you should walk as a child of God. Bless his name. But something was missing that needed to be revealed to the 12 disciples. And Jesus, as it is written in Luke, and beginning at Moses and the Psalms, and the prophet, Jesus expounded unto them the fulfillment of scripture so that the eyes of the disciples were opened. Jesus opened the eyes of the disciples, bless God. And when he had finished teaching them for three and a half years, he told them to go and carry in Jerusalem, bless God that they would be endued with power. And as Brother Leroy was teaching us again, Judas had forfeit his bishop prick by transgression. Bless God, not that Jesus had made a mistake in choosing him, bless the Lord, but Judas had chosen to overturn the teachings of Christ because he was in opposition to the teachings of Christ, not that Jesus had made a mistake, because Jesus said, have not I chosen you 12, and one of you is a devil. Does God make mistakes? Does the omnipotent God make mistakes? No. Bless his name. God gave Judas a choice. Bless God. And he made the wrong choice. It puts us in danger as ministers that we can be given a ministry and we can make shipwreck of our ministry if we don't follow the guidelines of Christ and stay under the government of Christ, even as ministers, blessed be his name. And Brother Leroy taught us that when Judas forfeit his bishop prick, bless God, then Matthias, Matthias was chosen by Lot bless God, to hold the position until the Apostle Paul, who was born out of season, meaning he was not manifested at the same time as the other 11 during the lifetime of Christ, but he was manifested to Paul after his death and resurrection. Jesus appeared to him on the Damascus Road, bless his name, and Paul was chosen out of season. Bless his name. And 2 Corinthians 11, I believe what our brother Leroy read, speak about Paul testifying about the validity of his appointment by God as an apostle and the proof of his calling by God as an apostle. And what was the proof that Paul presents to the brethren? It wasn't to show how rich he was, how successful he was, but his evidence and his proof was the suffering that he suffered in the name of the Lord. So if we read 2 Corinthians 11 from verse 21, the 28. This is Paul the Apostle showing his divine credibility to the brethren to say, you think I'm not an apostle? Look at the things I suffer because of Christ. Bless his name. And he's showing that the mark of a true apostle is his suffering. It would seem strange that that would be a mark of validity 
of his ministry. But he shows the things that he suffered. Bless his name, because Jesus said that you shall be hated. And this is what he's telling his disciples. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. So that would be a witness that God and Christ was with that individual if men hate you. It seemed upside down. Bless his name. But Jesus said, woe unto you when men speak well of you. For so spake they of the false prophets that were before you. But those that speak against you falsely, for my name's sake, he said, rejoice and be exceeding glad, because that is how they treated the prophets that were before you. So here is Paul showing an evident token of his apostleship, bless God, to show that he was called of God. Second Corinthians 11 verses 21 to 28. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, albeit wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prison, more frequent. In death, off. Of the Jews, Five times received I forty stripes, save one. Verse 25. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, and painfulness in watching often in hunger and thirst in fasting often in cold and nakedness beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches bless his name. So there is Paul giving an evident token of his apostleship to show that he was of God. And we remember that when Christ had appeared to him, Christ had shown him what great things he must suffer in his name, and then he must go to Rome and be executed. Bless his name. Jesus showed that to Paul at the beginning of his ministry. Bless God. I don't know if I would go to Rome when Jesus told me I'm going to be executed when I go. I believe it was Acts 18 or 19 around there. We don't have time to go there as I close. The brethren start to cry and said to Paul, don't go to Rome, Paul. Do not go, because I believe Agabus, another brethren, another one of the brethren with the spirit of prophecy on him, said to him that he's going to suffer and what and what is going to happen to Paul. And although the brethren were breaking Paul's heart, bless God, 
Paul was willing to be to be offered on the altar of sacrifice for Christ. Bless his name. He said that he had to finish his course. Bless God. So look at the testimony as I close. Look at the testimony of Paul. He's not boasting in his early, in, in his earthly achievement. And this is an educated man. This is not like Peter and the other disciples that were common fishermen, uneducated, not knowing letters. But Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, bless his name, concerning the law blameless. A person had been brought up by one of the most powerful teachers in Israel, bless his name, a person that was familiar with philosophy, Paul the Apostle. He quotes some verses pertaining to philosophy because you have Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, and those various philosophers, those Greeks that try to challenge Paul. Paul was versed in philosophy, versed in science, bless his name, versed in education, but Jesus said, sorry, Paul said, all things that were gained to me, I count as dung, that he might win Christ and gain the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. So as I close, giving God thanks for Paul the Apostle that was evidently set forth with the eleven. Matthias held the office for Paul, bless God, because we don't see any activity by Matthias, bless the Lord. And the 12 apostles were evidently set forth and the Holy Ghost bear witness of their ministry in so many different signs. Raising the dead, healing the sick, people being baptized in the Holy Ghost as they preach. Blessed be his name. People speaking in tongues, having the evidence and the witness of the Spirit of God. So we cannot deny Paul as one of the twelve. Bless his name. And we cannot deny that Paul is evidently set forth as an apostle to the Gentiles. So as I close at this time, I give God thanks for our Elder Thompson that had given, given us this important teaching that we as ministers should be encouraged by this teaching that if Jesus chooses you to be a minister, it means he give you the ability to do it because Jesus don't make mistakes. So if he call you to be a minister, you have the ability, bless his name. But the danger is that when he's given you the ability, you bury the talent and then turn round and call him a hard person, bless his name. But we're trusting God that we as ministers would not bury our talent. We're living in a very fierce time where it is hard to speak publicly about Christ. The Bible says that with the bishop, he must hold the mystery in a pure conscience. Holding the mystery. What is the mystery? Bless his name. The mystery that the minister must hold is that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. That is the mystery that the minister must hold. Bless God. Anybody try to tell you anything different, you must hold the mystery. Bless God. That's what it means to earnestly contend for the faith. And I pray that God will give us all, as ministers, courage that when our employers tell us that we don't want to hear that name around here, <laughs> we don't want you to mention Jesus around here, bless his name, we will be like Peter and John, that when the 
Pharisees and the scribes and the elders of the church forbade them. They said, if we catch you teaching in this name, we're going to beat you and what and what we're going to do to you. And Peter and John said, which is more important to obey man or to obey God? And although they forbade them to speak in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give God thanks that they took courage and continue to preach that Jesus is the Son of God. Bless his name. My encouragement to us ministers, do not stop preaching that Jesus is the Son of God. In some environment, if you mention the name of Jesus, bless his name, you are going to get persecuted and you're going to get afflicted. But nevertheless, bless his name, just like Paul, look what they did to him when he preached Jesus, the Son of God, beaten with rods, <laughs> nearly stoned, stoned him to death, and the brethren have to pray and raise him back to life again, <laughs> and, and the other things that happened to him. So I just ask the brethren that you pray for us as ministers, that we would not lose courage, we would not be like the ten spies that came back with an evil report. Bless God that we would come back with a good spirit like Joshua and Caleb. In Jesus' name, as I hand back to our sister Sandra. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Brother Patrick. God bless Thank you. Lord. Thank you. Thank you for being ready. Thank you for your reminder. God bless you. God bless you. If we can just say, God bless you, Brother Patrick. God bless, God bless you, Brother Patrick. Brother Thank Patrick. you, Brother Patrick. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for your words. You know, I was looking at this and I, I, I while um, Brother Patrick was speaking and I looked at this scripture and I thought to myself, brethren, you know, if we have a little cramp, we start to say, oh, Lord, it's because I'm a Christian or a little headache. Oh, Lord, it's because I'm a Christian. But three times he was beaten with a rod. Once with stone, he was stoned. Three times he suffered shipwreck. A night and day I've been in the deep. It, this, this, it wasn't no, no simple, you know, a cut eye. <laughs> somebody you said name Jesus and somebody cut their eye after you or, or tell you to move it was this was serious and then it goes on this, again and when he goes it in journeying often in peril of water in peril of robbers in peril of my own countrymen in peril by the brethren in the heathens in peril in the city in peril in the, the wilderness in peril in the sea in peril amongst false brethren brethren praise the lord Praise the Lord right now. Praise God. We are blessed right now. But this is to get us get us ready. Put on your, your whole armor. God bless you. Before I call Brother Earl, I'm going to ask Sister Shirley to just give us a, a short refrain. I think she's got a little song ready. And, I, and I'll calm down, brethren. I promise I will calm down. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Praise the Lord. May your struggles keep you near the cross. And may your trouble show that you need God. And may your battles end the way they should. And may your bad days prove that God is good. And may your whole life prove that God is good. May your struggles keep you near the cross and may our troubles show that we need God. May your battles end the way they should and may our bad days prove that God is good and may our whole lives prove that God is 
good. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Pastor. Oh, no. God bless you. <laughs> so appropriate. So appropriate. God bless you. At this time, brethren, brother Earl, brother Earl, brethren. God bless you. God bless you all. Um, Sister Sandra, could you just quickly enable to me to share screen, please? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Thank you. All right. Let's see if I can get this up. God bless you all. Um, whilst I'm trying to get this um, presentation up, <laughs> um, God bless you, Brother Pat. I'm going to ask you to still continue to minister with me as we hold hands together to support our elder who, um, through no planned circumstance of his own, um, has found himself in a situation tonight. But we are one another's keeper. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we mustn't best be ready when it's our turn, but I remember overseer when Moses held up his hands, Israel got the victory. And mm -hmm. when, he got, when he got tired, and you'll be a witness, it's true, Joshua, I think it was, and Caleb um, went and took an arm each. And as long as Moses' hands stayed up, Israel got the victory. Amen. So our prayer is with Elder Thompson and his family tonight. You know, of all the days, if you really think about it, Regin, of all the days for him to not, for this to happen, it would be on the day when he is actually ministering. And many nights I've had to... I've had personal battles where I need to get to Bible study, I need to get Bible study. And why is this happening on this night of all the days of the week? Anyway, nonetheless, um, I would like to just quickly go through a summary of what Elder Thompson is teaching. I might be a little bit added to it. And as you can see on the screen, I just want to quickly go through a summary of the 12 apostles. Please remember the 12 apostles because we're going to end up on the 12. Now, I'm going to ask Brother Pat to read. And before he does, I just want to say to him, and this has been recorded, and I'd like Elder Thompson to be aware of it. We have an overseer, and we've got an assistant overseer, and we've got deacons. There's are three male factors in our fellowship. And I'd like them to lie down in their bed at night, and if the Lord takes them home, I'd like them to be at peace mm. that there are elders in the church that are built into the rock. Amen. Yeah. And I don't want to just, and I'll say this as well, give God thanks for Sister Sandra. Brother Pat, you hold that fort, not just in teaching, but in praying. Pam holds the fort in teaching as well. And Sister Shirley holds the reins as the appointed minister for the church. And we are enters into um, a period of grandparentshood and motherhoods and Sandra, Pam, Shirley and others are now stepping up into the mothers of the church and the reason why they're mothers is because their children depends on them and like a hen they'll get and there will be people coming in that will need the comfort and the protection of mothers but also brother Pat yourself Lee and Leroy brother Claude and others who have held the fort for these years we need to understand that when it's time for Simeon overseer, Simeon Byfield, Simeon R.L. Edwards, Simeon Deacon Wallace go, mm -hmm. they will, we want them to go knowing that the foundation of the Lord stand it sure. Amen. Is that right, overseer? Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> amen. Bless Hallelujah. Blessed Jesus. Right, man. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 2. Brother Pat, if you could read verse, please, what's on the screen. Thank God. Matthew 10, 2. Now the names of the 12 apostles mm -hmm. are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Now, in a previous verse, it said, when he had called the 12 unto him, he named them apostles. Now, what our Elder Thompson has been rightly teaching, mm. apostle is not self-appointed. No. Is that right, Overseer? Amen. <laughs> the 12 
including yes, Judas, were, were called disciples first. Yes. So any man who is an apostle has to acknowledge he has to be a disciple yes. first. Yes. <laughs> being a disciple is more important than being an apostle. An apostle. Because you have to be a disciple first. You can't be an apostle and then a disciple. So which is greater? It oh. is better to be a servant than yeah. apostle. So there were disciples before they became apostles, even Judas. And I'm not going to do that. I just want you to remember. Come with me for a few minutes with the 12 apostles. Mm -hmm. They did not appoint themselves, but no. the Lord, and there's a important point. He called them apostles. He called his disciples and named them apostles. Right? They didn't name themselves apostles, but he named them apostles. Right, but Pat, Acts chapter 1 which you touched on a few minutes ago, verse 20 to 23. Another word for apostleship is it takes into the term the bishop. bishop. Read for me, brother, brother Pat. Amen. For it is written in the book of Psalms, mm -hmm. let his habitation be desolate, uh, and let no man worship and his bishopric let another take. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. went in and out among us, mm -hmm. beginning from the baptism of John mm -hmm. unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us mm -hmm. of his resurrection. And they appointed two. Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, mm -hmm. and Messiah. Now, Judas was not just named, firstly, a disciple. No. Secondly, he had a bishopric. Bishopric. Is that right, overseer? Amen, amen. Right. Amen, he was a bishop. He was a bishop. A now, bishop. an apostle... Though they were all apostles, if Judas was a bishop as yes. well as an apostle, all the 12, though it's not said, okay. were all bishops as well. Mm -hmm. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, because Lord. Judas could not be the bishop and the other 11 weren't. No. Now, take his bishopric mm -hmm. and bishop. give it to another because Judas... Mm -hmm. We all know the story. Yes, he right. had to fulfill the prophetical happening of the scriptures. Yeah. Um, and I think it's in the... Um, if we read the next few verses, we'll come down to it. Brother Pat. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, mm -hmm. that he might go to his own place. Mm -hmm. And they gave forth their lot, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Now, in the choosing of the replacement of the apostle, Judas mm -hmm. and given him given up of his bishopric they weren't chosen by Christ the disciples now began the process to fill the role that Judas vacated mm -hmm. they subsequently asked the Lord to choose and yet they gave their lots their lots means their vote their vote so None of the original 12 were put into office of apostle by or bishop. Ah, oh, the seer. They were chosen. <laughs> by voting. <laughs> 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 so even when they were voting into position, yeah. a man yeah. hasn't got no right to make himself <laughs> an Jesus apostle. Him. So anyone that you hear That's in 2020, mm -hmm. two, 
that says he's an apostle ask him a simple question always chosen who appointed you who appointed you because mm -hmm. he has had to say i was made an apostle by the general assembly of this particular church oh, or jesus made me you can't just appoint yourself no according to the truth of the scripture amen now remember they do the lots now, the lot. if jesus was there the question brethren would mm. he need lots mm. or would he just choose mm -hmm. christ would not use lot to appoint the replacement for judas no and i need you to remember that no, it's a crazy because man. the 12 including judas was chosen without lots the That's lord right. hear what he said when he chose them hear what he says those whom thou has given me mm -hmm. i have I'll kept, kept. None and is none is lost save the save son, the son of of petition. of petition so his choosing of the original mm -hmm. apostles will <laughs> give him instruction to him by god that's the one Absolutely. that's one those so they were chosen by him because him that chose them jesus he was mm -hmm. told by god i have given you peter chosen. i've given you james mm -hmm. so he chose james and he chose peter there was no yes. loss now i need you to remember come with me because i'm not gonna be too long Acts 1 and verse 20, which Brother Pat went into not too long ago. For it is written in the book of Psalms, mm -hmm. let me not one. Take of a bishop. No man dwell therein, and his let another take. Yeah, it should read, let another take his bishopric, right? Which is the New Testament confirming the Old Testament of Psalms, where Judas is established both in the New Testament and the Old Testament as being a bishop. The apostle have the office of a bishop in there. So when a man claims today he's an apostle, does he has the office of a bishop? I'll tell you why carnality does. Back in the days, a man wanted to be a pastor. Then they carnally desire, discern that the bishop is higher office than a pastor. So as the days come up to today, men wanted to be bishops more than pastors. What has happened over the years is that they've now put apostleship above bishopric. And most people now, from pastor to bishop you'll find the two greatest positions now that is being striving for in the church world is prophet <laughs> and, and apostleship because i want a higher position and ministers have to be careful because it is the same spirit that the devil has having the office of a prophet or a bishop means this the higher you go is the lower you must go because this he that would be the greatest jesus said must be the least I haven't got time to go into all of it now because now 10 to 10 to 9 um now brethren listen are there false prophets in the last days brother patrick read for me please Bless the lord for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. So in these last days, in Matthew 24, false Christ, false prophets would arise. So there are prophets here on the earth today. But the question is, are they false or are they true? And we need the spirit of discernment. And to discern, you need knowledge of God's word in order to discern. So when you look at someone who says they're a prophet or an apostle, you will not judge them by your intellect or your knowledge. You judge them by the book. Such are false apostles. So let's not just look at the fact that people are saying they're apostles. We also look at the fact they are false apostles. And Paul says they are, some of them are deceitful workers. And what they do, they're not appointed. 
but they're transforming themselves into what? <laughs> the apostles of Christ, even though Christ directly haven't chosen them. Come with me. Now, let's look at, we're summing up what Brother Elder Thompson uh, uh, has been teaching us. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, the church, I don't mean the gospel outreach ministry, the church is the body of Christ made up of individual sanctified believers who have accepted Christ, who serve him with all their heart, soul, and strength and mind. And in every nation, he that has accepted Christ and work at righteousness is accepted in him. We can't open up and shut up heaven to no man. The truth is this. Out of the known churches, Christ will take out the individual sanctified members to formulate his body in the day of the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, when the spirits of just men will be made perfect, when the trump of God shall sound, and all the members from ages to come, present and future, future, those who died and got to the Lord, he's going to bring them to the general assembly and they're going to have convention. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> the church will be taken out of the churches. The foundation of the church that Jesus said upon this rock, I'll build my church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. What's the foundation? The teachings of the apostles. The teachings of the prophets. Because the prophets prophesied by the spirit of Christ that was within them, according to 1 Peter. And the apostles were told, teaching them whatsoever I commanded you. So the apostles and prophets of Christ don't only taught what the spirit of Christ in them taught them, or when they were eyewitnesses, the difference between the apostles and the prophets, apart from John. <laughs> John was the greatest for one reason, by the fact. God bless you, sir. Because Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, all these men, even Abraham himself being a prophet, prophet, Moses was a prophet. They didn't see the day. Abraham saw it afar off through faith, rejoiced, but didn't literally see. But concerning John the Baptist, hear him. Look, behold the Lamb of God. <laughs> he, said, he said, I'm the forerunner. I'm preparing the way because I'm being blessed with more than all the prophets to behold his days. And when John saw him, brother Pat, this is what John says. Yeah. He says, he said, I must, it's time for me to decrease. <laughs> and he must increase. Now, when you find a true prophet, he will have the utterance of John the Baptist. He don't use his prophetical ministry to elevate himself. He uses his prophetic ministry to point people to Christ. And I would not permit me to go into that tonight. So the foundation, as much as he was the greatest of the prophets, he wrote not one verse of scripture. The greatest prophet didn't write no script. The greatest of all the prophets was the transformation from prophets to apostles. Because what happened now, the apostles that wrote the scripts, the foundation of the Old Testament, is going to hand it over to the apostles of the New Testament. Out of that which was written, of Daniel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, the, prof the apostles like Pete, like um, Paul, our apostle, will take the writings and interpret them and be like Christ who says, I'll come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Come and imagine for the next few minutes. Now concerning the church. Brother Pat, read first, please. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers now the foundation as we read previously in the previous verse of the lord we are built upon and then it says in another verse of scripture which i haven't got the foundation of the lord standeth short the apostles are not only prophets the uh, the, 
the prophets are not only prophets and the apostles are not only apostles, but they're members of the church. Abel is a member of the church. So when he says he gave some, he's not just talking from the New Testament time, he's talking back from the days of old until the days to come, which because everybody that operated in the will of God is part of the body of Christ. So he gave some prophets, he gave some apostles, evangelists, and some pastors and teaching for the work of the ministry. There are three major things what the, the, the ministry is given for. He gave the ministry for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, anyone who claims that they're an apostle, or prophet, or teacher, or evangelist, the primary purpose of their office is to edify the church. It's to work in the ministry. Yeah, for the edifying of the body of Christ, the work of the ministry, until we all come to the unity of the Christ. This is what it's for. Now, again, time will not permit me. Let me try and close it off now. Now, let me deal with one person as I close. And I love the Apostle Paul. Because remember, he chose 12, but lots were, two were chosen, and lots were cast, votes was given, and Matthias was chosen. But the original 12, Christ chose them. Now, listen to Paul, because he was not appointed an apostle by lots being cast. Read for me, please, Brother Pat. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. 2 Timothy 1, 11, Whereunto I am appointed a teacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. So here's the Apostle Paul. He's saying, I am called to be an apostle. And in being called, I've been separated unto the gospel of God. Now, who called him? It wasn't the apostles that was before him. So unlike Matthias, Somebody called him, and it wasn't the 11. He says, I speak to you Gentiles, which is now to us, inasmuch I am an apostle to Gentiles, and I magnify my own. So the person that called him didn't just say, I will show you how much you suffer, but explain to him that he's an apostle to the Gentiles. That's why when Peter was supposed to minister to the Gentiles and cutting short, he refused to do it. But when he went up after 14 years to the apostles that were before him, when they saw in him the ministry that was given to him before they saw it, <laughs> they gave him the right and the fellowship and sent him forth to the Gentiles because they saw it before they sent him. We as ministers should see the gift and calling in a person's life before we appoint them to office. <laughs> Paul went on to say, I'm not just an apostle, but went to, I'm appointed a preacher and an apostle. So an apostle can preach as well. And a teacher to the Gentiles. So when you go into apostleship, it's not Amen. just one or two little things. Ella Thompson, God bless you, sir. <laughs> now, let me try and wind this down. I'm not going to read all of it, but I want to take you to Acts chapter 26 where Paul was giving witness to Fetus or Agrippa, one of those guys, and he was explaining his call into apostleship. And listen carefully, brethren, to what he says in Acts 26 and verse 14. I need you to listen to this now. I'm just summing up for Ella Thompson. I had a little piece there. Brother Pat, please read. I know you like this. <laughs> hey. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. Now, from Acts 10 to Acts 26, he's now giving witness of what happened on, I believe, the Damascus Road. Now, listen carefully, Bridget. When we were fallen on the earth, or they the, the heard the sword of light, 
But Paul was the only one, I believe, that heard the voice, if I remember correctly. And Paul said this. I heard, listen carefully, a voice speaking unto me. And it wasn't one of the 11. And saying to me, <laughs> and I need you to listen to the tongue, brother Pat. Because we all know that Jesus was speaking to Paul. But where was Jesus, brethren, when he was speaking to Paul? Does anyone know? The right hand of God. God bless you, Helder Thompson. Glad you come back. You come the right time. So while sitting, listen carefully, at the right hand of God, if you went up there whilst he was spoke, you'll find in heaven, I've got a little secret for you. Jesus is speaking Hebrew. <laughs> 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 Elders <laughs> of the Gospel Outreach Ministry. In heaven, how our high priest speaks Hebrew. <laughs> not German, not French. Not Italian, and he wasn't saying "wah wah." Where I do, he wasn't even speaking English. But the Bible tells us that from the right hand of God, where there's fullness of joy, and from the right hand of God, where there's pleasures for more, in His glorified state, He spoke with a glorified Hebrew voice. Which tells me this, and I believe it all my heart. The original language that God preserved from Adam is the Hebrew tongue. And I'll tell you why I believe it. Because he said, I am the God of the Hebrew. And he will preserve the lineage from Adam, the seed of the woman, until Messiah come through Abraham to David. And when Christ is now glorified, having his celestial glorified body that did not see corruption, my Bible tells me he's speaking in Hebrew. Paul heard Christ speaking to him from heaven. Now, how many of us know the distance between earth and heaven? Let me tell you about, <laughs> let me tell you something about the voice of Christ. Brethren, brethren, brethren. I don't know the, the, the length or the breadth or the depths of between the earth I stand on and the heaven where God's throne. But when Christ speaks, the distance is nothing. And he spoke to Paul and called him in the Hebrew tongue. Now, unlike Matthias, no lots have been cast. And I'm going to close. <laughs> And this is my last verse to you, brethren. And I need you to think about this and, and pray with me about it because I want full revelation of it because I prophesy in part and I see in part. Here a little, brother Patrick gets a little Leroy, get a little. But when we put our understandings together, brother Pat, brother Leroy, it's like a threefold chord <laughs> that cannot be broken. Read for me, please, brother Pat. Amen, man. Amen. 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 Three, four card. <laughs> Read from the me, brother. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the land. Now, I saw New Jerusalem, the city of God, holy Mount Zion, coming down as a bride from heaven, and I saw this city had twelve foundations. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And there were 12 gates to the city. And in front of each gate, God have an angel <laughs> standing at each gate, doorkeepers. And the city that came down had 12 foundations. And in them, the 12 foundations, the name of the 12 apostle, Elder Thompson. So anyone else that claims they're an apostle, there is no 
13th foundation. There is only 12 foundations to the city. And Judas lost his bishop prick. <laughs> I need you to pray for me now. Now, if Messiah was chosen by lot, and I've never heard him saying, am I not an apostle? <laughs> Have not I seen Christ? <laughs> Did I not hear him speak in the Hebrew tongue? <laughs> Has, have I been separated unto the gospel of God? Let me tell you one reason why I love the great apostle Paul. But Pat explained that he's the apostle born out of due time. He was the least. But God used the least of the apostle to write the majority of the epistles of the New Testament scriptures. And guess who he is to us? He is the apostle to you and me, the Gentile. Now, here's the question I'm going to leave with you. Who doesn't mind if he's not one of the 12 he would give it <laughs> to Messiah, even though I kind of beg to differ in my understanding of the scriptures. And I want you to pray me back and go grab me clarity in this. That the difference between him and Matthias, no lot was cast. And I firmly in my heart believe until proven otherwise that his bishopric was given to him by Christ confirmed by the apostles and because Judas lost his bishopric Paul mm -hmm. took his place as one of the twelve and they are part of the foundation of the new city that come down as I close and hand back and Elder Thompson has been rightly teaching here comes Mr. Grant now wants to be an apostle has not been chosen by Christ, has not seen Christ, has not even been appointed by ministers elsewhere in the church, but all I want to be a apostle because it's a big name. They don't worry about that. No other foundation can any man lay. Christ only have 12 apostles. He only chose 12. And listen, the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in the name of the 12 were the name of the 12 apostles and Paul is an apostle chosen by Christ. God bless you as I hand back. Dr. It's Sandra. Bless you, Dr. Oh, God bless you. You know why I'm grinning, right? I'm thinking to myself, did you prepare all of that between the time of... When did you prepare all of that? God bless you. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Only since you told me. Uh, really? Brethren, what an example. I was sitting there and I was thinking... <laughs> And and I, thought, I knew it was fast. I thought, I was going to have a bone to pick with you, but I said, no, you must be ready. So, whilst Brother, whilst brother Pat mm. was giving his exhortation, the scriptures came flooding, and I wrote them down, put them on PowerPoint, and I said, Lord, don't make him finish until I have it all prepared. And, oh, put it. and just as I finish, yeah. Brother Pat finished, and I was like, okay, God bless you all. God bless you. I'm going to say, talk about being ready. God, say God bless you, brother. Man, God bless God you, brother. Bless you. Oh, man. Honestly, I, you know, the, and the only reason I know that you did it really, you, brother. The only reason I know that you did it really quickly is because you missed the A off Apostle in the last slide. Yeah, and I, I had to turn I off the oven. I've been deliberate, but... and I had to turn off the oven because I just came. I literally just came through the door. God bless you. Wow, what an example, brethren. What an example. I'm truly blessed. God bless you. Brother L, God bless you, Brother Patrick. Um, and I could hear <laughs> Brother Leroy. I, what a summary. Can you turn on your mic and say hello to everyone? Because I'm not going to make you take too long. I don't know where you are. Are you there? Bless the Lord. But, is Brother Leroy there? I'm sure I heard him throughout. Or did he come on and go? Oh, we've lost him. 
Oh, I heard him. He could be at the hospital and logged in. <laughs> yeah, he's probably in the waiting room. But wow. Wow, brethren. Talk about being ready. Oh, I am so, so blessed. And I was going to ask Brother Leroy to, to say hello or to, to say something, but obviously he um, he is probably in the waiting room. But this is this it's been a privilege to, to host today. Absolute privilege. Not that it isn't normally, but this is, you know, the last minute. And this is where it says, be prepared. You know, how prepared are you? If judgment was if, if the Lord was to come now, we're ready. Are you ready? That's what you call ready, brethren. Anyway, let me again. I've got to keep calming down, haven't I? Oh, I don't know. Brother Wall, Brother Wallace, are you here? And um, before I'm gonna ask, I thank the lovely to see you, Sister Catherine and Brother Headley. Missed you, haven't seen you for a while. Just thought I'd say, because I saw you come on and again. God. God bless, bless you, you, brethren. God bless, bless you. you. God bless you. And just quickly, how are you doing? Uh, fine. Well, fine, thank, thank you. you. Bless you all. God bless you. Lovely to bless you. Miss bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Have you back. Um, and Sister Cynthia, how are you doing, Sister Cynthia? Just take off your mic. Let me hear you. Because it was bless lovely. You. How are you? Bless you. How are you? Much better. Much better. Thank you. It was lovely to see you over the weekend, our long weekend. Brilliant to see you on Saturday night. And you did look beautiful, even though I know that you, you wasn't hugging nobody, but I hugged you. <laughs> <laughs> lovely to see you. God bless you, brother. Brother Wallace, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. God, well, brethren, I'm going to ask Brother Wallace to, to pray for our brethren to pray for brother Leroy to pray for our teachers who's teaching next week um is it brother Patrick or overseer well, well I'm just saying that it's moved on it's now either brother Patrick or overseer and hopefully they'll be as ready as Earl was and brother Pat was today God oh, bless you brother Wallace please before I talk out the night please just say a <laughs> prayer <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God, we love you this evening, Lord. We thank you. Thank you. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. He's reigning over us from his throne above. What a mighty God we serve. Eternal Father and our God. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Another Thursday evening, Lord, we thank you for gathering us together. Lord, and what you have given unto us, oh God, we are so grateful. Thank you for the ministers, Lord, whom you have used to explain your word and to give us an understanding and a direction, Lord Jesus, in which we could truly understand and to know, Lord Jesus, that your word is he and amen. Because, Lord, you said none should be added to your word and none should be taken away. And therefore, this evening, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for the privilege of sitting one more time in your presence, Lord, and to understand, O oh God, the goodness of your love towards us. All things that you have done, O oh God, it has done to you for the purpose of our guidance, Lord, and our understanding towards you, and we thank you. Without your mercy this evening, Lord, where would we be? Without your love towards us this evening, where would we be? But God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have helped us, that when we should come to you, Lord, we should surrender our spirit to you, Lord, that our spirit would be blessed. Again, I thank you for the Brother Patrick, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord Jesus, the service by explaining to us, oh God, and so also, Brother Hurl, at this present time, Lord, who come forth, thank you for them, Lord Jesus, that you have given them the understanding and the privilege, oh God, that we could understand more. Even for Brother Leroy, Lord, I pray that you will strengthen his house. Guide them and protect them, Lord, from whatsoever is going around or whatsoever 
be happening to them. Lord, you only you know. And therefore, Lord, you are there to strengthen and you are there to guide. Strengthen each and every one this evening, Lord, who join. Oh God, and be Zoom to hear. Strengthen all the sisters and whosoever, Lord Jesus, who are able to join in and to listen to your word. And strengthen Sister Sandra, Lord, also who make the effort constantly, Lord Jesus, to do the little that she can do. Bless us, guide us, and protect us, Lord. And truly, rest of the week, Lord, we do not know what is ahead of us. But, Lord, because you know the end before the beginning, we ask you, Lord, to take us through. Guide us, protect us, and keep us. Lord, as we will continue to look to and love you, Lord, because it is because of you first loved us. Guide us in the name of Jesus as we give you thanks and honor to the glory of your name. Amen and amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Brother Mark. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Beautiful prayer. God bless you. Brethren, do you want to just praise the Lord before we call Sister Charmaine to give her announcement? Just praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Lord, worthy. Truly blessed. Sister Charmaine, oh, before, how long? Oh, you're going, aren't you? This is your last time. For how long? A few weeks. Shall I stop it? Shall I stop it? You sound really shy. Can you sound just... Leave me alone and let me just give the announcement. I want to leave me alone. <laughs> okay, then give the announcement. God bless you, brethren. God bless you. On Sunday, our service starts at 1.30 and finishes at 4 p.m. Our topic for this week is Mark of a True Disciple. And our readings are taken from 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. And first John chapter four, verse seven to twelve. God bless, God bless you. you. We will miss you. God bless you, Sister Charmaine. Bless you. We will God miss God. you. And we'll see you for two weeks. We'll be praying for you. I know you had your prayer on Sunday, but oh, that beautiful smile. And who's going to do the announcements, Sister Shirley? <laughs> Is it you? <laughs> I'm just going to say thank you, and then I'm going to ask you to say the benediction for us, Sister Charmaine. Is it high? Is it high? Sorry, is it high? Is it <laughs> so, brethren? Thank you for I've really enjoyed myself, as you could probably tell. And not to mention the fact that I had a little nap this afternoon, it's probably why I've got so much energy. But um, because I woke up really early. Anyway, that's enough about me. I just want to thank Overseer for his opening prayer, especially for Brother Leroy and his family. Um, and let's keep praying for them. It was lovely that he joined us today. I did put him down, like I said, to say something. Thank you, Brother Patrick, for your beautiful exhortation. Hold the ministry. Praise God. Praise God. Hold the ministry. Um, do not stop preaching Jesus is the Son of God, regardless of what anybody tells us, no matter what the threats are. Praise God. Keep preaching. The beautiful exhortation by Brother Earl. Oh, my God. A summary of the 12 apostles with preparation that is beyond belief. But thank God for the example that is led. To Pastor Shirley for the rendition, God is good. May your struggles keep you near the cross, brethren. Let May our struggles keep us near the cross. And the beautiful, wonderful closing prayer of our Deacon Wallace. God bless you, brethren. It has been a privilege. I can't say it enough because I am smiling from ear to ear and just happy to be saved. God bless you, Sister Charmaine, the benediction. <laughs> Word of our mouth. God bless you. Be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, as gentle. Praise the Lord. Who was that little voice? I had a little voice. God bless you. Don't so like Rihanna. Oh, it was me. Hi, Adi. Oh, oh. 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 Jessica. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all. It's coming for me. God bless you, brethren. God bless you. God bless you, brethren. God bless you. 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 God b
Jessica. Oh, Jessica. Oh, my God. 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 O